teach it repeatedly. You've got to talk about it and talk about it and talk about it. Because I get a lot of dads who will say this. Well, I taught them one time. Do you realize even at this church with all of you that we have to announce something five to seven times before you hear it? Like, do you wish we, do you know how bad we wish we didn't have to do a, 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 an announcement video? But here's the thing. We'll have someone send us an email. I can't believe you didn't tell us we were doing it. And we're like, D-. we only told you seven times, right? Guess what? Your kids are a lot like you, right? Like, you got to keep telling them. Now, I also want to make sure you know this. It doesn't mean that you, like, you got to be weird or strange, Okay. Doesn't mean like they come home from school or they come home from sports or their extracurricular activity and they're like, hi mom, hi dad, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, trust in the Lord. Like that's not what it's called for, right? Like this has to be not only conversational, but it has to be relational, right? This is what you are to do. It's your responsibility to steer the conversation. And I just want to remind all the mom and dads in the room, you're driving. Every kid in the room thinks they're driving. They ain't driving. They didn't pay for the car. They didn't pay for the fuel. They didn't pay for the insurance. You're driving. Don't hand over the steering wheel. Don't give the keys away. Like you drive the conversation. So when they're telling you about their day or they're talking to you about this or that, steer the conversation, right? And by the way, you can do so in a way that is attractive and not in a way that's just going to crush everything that's going on for them, right? Uh, It's saying something like this. Hey, in that scenario, that situation you just shared, like how do you think that's going to turn out? Or hey, what you're telling me, like what do you think is going to be the long-term outcome of that? And so you can do that. And what it may look like is this. Uh, Maybe your son or daughter, maybe they bring up something. And you go, oh, wow, you know, I've never heard of that. Hey, I I don't know if I know much about that. Now, listen, the students aren't listening. Your kids aren't listening. Uh, Hint, hint, clue, clue. You probably do know. But it's okay to go, huh, I don't know if I know a lot about that. What if we were to learn about that together? By the way, Great humility in doing so. The Proverbs, which I'm in, talks a lot about you don't have to be the first one to give an answer. You don't always have to be the one feeding the answer. Like, you know what's amazing for your children? If they learn the answer with you. Like if it's a discovery. Now, you've already been there, right? You're just going to take them on the journey for the first time. Deuteronomy 6.20 says this. When your son asks you in time to come, saying, What is the meaning of these testimonies, these statutes, and the judgments which the Lord our God has commanded you? So here's the thing. Then it's going to be a conversation, right? Um, The Proverbs, you're going to hear a lot about that this summer because that's what I'm reading. The Proverbs over and over again say this. My child, listen to my words. Here's the thing. For them to listen to your words, first of all, you have to be speaking words. The only way you're going to speak words is in a relationship. Because the relationship allows them to receive those words. But that's an investment that you're going to have to make. Now, next week, we're going to give you some practical points to parent. But this week, I just wanted you to see Like, if it doesn't come out of a love relationship, by the way, it's not necessarily even a love relationship. It's your first love relationship with God. Far above a guy or a girl or even children or or a next generation. And and here's why. Here's like one of those nuggets we're going to give you next week. Write this down. Rules without relationship is going to be rebellion. Let me just tell you. If you give rules and you don't have a relationship, it's going to be rebellion. Like, they're going to turn on that. But guess what? Rules with relationship, you know what happens in the outcome? Now, there's a son or a daughter. There's someone of the next gen that's following after God. 
So it's something as simple as, hey, I was just reading my Bible the other day, and I was wondering if, if maybe I could share this with you. Or, hey, I heard this new song on the Joy FM. Have you ever heard? I mean, I, I thought of you when I heard, the, can I play it for you? I mean, we just had a baseball coach in the College World Series at his press conference go, before I say anything, I'm going to play you guys a song. Can you imagine? University of Kentucky's baseball coach at his press conference played a Phil Wickman song. How about that? Listen, mom and dad, you can do that for your kids. He did it in a press conference. Like, I'm not answering any questions until you listen to the song. Like, you can do that, mom and dad. But you do know you're still in charge. So it's about you loving God. It's about you leading your kids to follow in your footsteps. And when you do that, now listen, I can't promise you Jonathan Edwards' tree. I can just say this. Maybe the reason we don't have a lot more Jonathan Edwards' trees is because we don't have a lot more Jonathan Edwards. And if you want those college professors, the lawyers, the teachers, maybe. Again, you don't have to be a pastor or philosopher. Jonathan Edwards just did what Deuteronomy 6 said. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. These three remain. Faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Loving God. Loving your spouse, loving your children, loving the next gen.